All right, I'm back. Um, just um, just just because um, poster putty. It's useful if you don't want to put holes in the wall, but it's it's definitely a pain to get things to work. <laughs> okay. Oh jeez, you know like you're <laughs> you're doing the friggin' butt base whatever. <laughs> Sure enough, though, upon me. Okay, I said that already. I raised a hand and waved, trying to catch her attention. It's a toe! Hey, it's a toe! She drops in her tracks and looks for towards me. Evidently noticing my call, as she does, I notice someone walking beside her. Ooh! Ooh! I can't get a good look at whoever it is, though. The two begin to walk towards. Is this is this her boyfriend? As you reach us, as you reach us, Lily and I stand and dust ourselves off. Akira? Hey, you two. Oh, it is. She notices. She nods towards me, a gesture which I quickly return. My gaze shifts towards the young girl next to her, and her eyes meet. As they do, Akira pops a hand onto her head, a move which doesn't seem to phase her. I don't believe we met. I'm Hidekai. Hidekai. Hid. 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 I had a key. I had a Wait. Wait one second. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I <laughs> Probably not the best at best option or best thing to use. Hidaki. 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 Pleased to meet you, Sal. A guy's name, huh? Yes, I dodged a bullet there. He pulls some. He bows somewhat, restrained by Akira's hand being on his ha head. Oh, Hideki's here too. Are you well? Akira's been taking very good care of me. Thank you. Akira grins as it to confirm the point and rubs his head hard, dragging it around in a circular notion motion. His dreary face does during this is somewhat amusing. Uncle's out of business again, so I'm just taking him around the town for today. I'd have heard to be spending the day on a date with my boyfriend, but... Okay, so... It's not about her. Hideki gives a cough to try and redirect the curious thoughts. And he does, though. I find myself... Mind one. I find my mind wandering. They're related? And further... As first cousins? I suppose that explains what, why she's taking care of him in any case. Come to think of it, Hideki. How did you know my name? Kira told me. Being a Yamaki student, I suppose you're disabled in some way. Not everyone in Yamaki is disabled. Which I only learned a handful of days ago. I give a silent thanks to Shizune and Misha for their stream of information about how the school works. Because of them, I find out that since the school is, will accept practically anybody suffering from a non-mental dis disability, it doesn't discriminate against healthy people either. It seems unlikely that many good health, many in good health would enroll there, though. While the standards of education is pretty high, it's extremely isolated and very much focused on helping disabled students. You're dodging the question. Damn, he's sharp. Before I can say another word though, he decides to take a stab at it himself. If I were to call it myself, your heart? Akira looks mindfully curious, um, mildly curiously at me. Her interest peaked as well. That sure was a lucky guess. How did you... You show no missing limbs or deformity, so external disabilities are out. Considering the lack of any strained mannerism, it is also unlikely that you'd have any mental disability. But Yamaku doesn't take mental disabled students. I know. Leaving that aside, the only possibility left there is that of internal disabilities. I don't know which one you might be at there, so I guessed correctly. So I guessed correctly as it turns out, and the reaction confirms my guess. More than a little bemused, I look to Akira. She grins and shrugs, obviously taking some enjoyment out of her partner's deduction. He's sharp, yes, but a little more unsympathetic. 
logical, but lacking in tact. His attitude reminds me of Shizune in a way, as do his looks. May I ask why you're staring at me? Surely I'm not an unusual specimen. Does he not know how to how unusually he looks? I could overlook this bat and clothing as just being coincidental, but the ribbon in this hair really is too much. This is entirely beside the point though. Sorry, you just remind me of someone. I dare gives him a short jab with her elbow. I told you, you're not much different from her. He coughs into his hand and tries to remain, maintain an upright, serious demeanor. I see you've met my sister then. Perhaps my full name might help you. I'm Hideki Hakamachi. You're probably thinking my sister, Shizun Hakamachi. Oh, so he's Shizun's brother. Wait a minute. If Hideki is the son of Akira's uncle, and Shizun is his sister, then that means Lily and Shizun's fathers are, are brothers, therefore, Lily and Shizun are first cousins? What? Like grows in an uncharacteristically unrestrained manner. The reaction earns an amused smirk from her sister. <laughs> then enmity between the two just took on another meaning. I thought it simply a much matter of difficulty of communication with the, between the two. But a first feud makes things much more complicated. Just to let you know, I already knew that they were, they were cousins. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. She gives a half-hearted shrug. She mustn't give that much. She mustn't give as much weight to the two conflict as I do. As I do. As I do. Well, that's how it is. What are you two up to anyway on this fine day? We're shopping for Anako's birthday present. The day will be coming up soon, so this will be the last chance we'll have before school starts again for the week. Akira makes a strange face as if Lily had just said that the sky wasn't blue and the clouds not white. Isn't her birthday on the 10th next month? Yes, why? Is there something wrong? Akira's face seems to collapse in an utterly, un utterly unbefitting expression for someone so rowdy and that strong. The folks didn't call you yet? As Lily shakes her head closely, I look at Hideki to show he knows any. To show to see if he knows anything about this. A simple shrug is his only answer. Here we go. For a moment, Akira ponders what to do, smiling once again. The fact that she can hide her emotions so quickly and effectively is unsettling. Hey, Shorty. Sorry, but can you hang with us out for a while? Yeah, we have to go. We have to go to, S to Scotland. Uh, he nods and waves off. Akira placing an arm on Lily's shoulder as she guides away and out of earshot. And so I'm left alone with Shorty. So <laughs> nice weather, isn't it? it seems so. I guess he dumped us. Indeed. What a far partial, far farcical attempt at small talk. I've got no idea how to talk to this guy, and his robotic responses aren't helping. Blood and stone come to mind. Yep, blood and stone come to mind. Without another word, he begins to rock on his feet. He begins to rock on his feet in an obvious gesture of boredom with discussion. He really like. He really is like a little kid despite his serious demeanor. Expecting the conversation over, I decided to accomplish what I came here to do in the first place. I'm going to go search for a present. Coming? Not much else to do. Oh. So, huh. Well then. We're not finishing with Lily. Alright. In a little while, we come to a small shop beside the convenience store. For once, the store's window is aren't filled with electronics and computer games, but dolls, stuff bears, and all more wood-crafted oddities. Othello's Antiques, an antique store. Well, there's any if there's anything in the town that to Danako, I guess it'd be here. Oh, 
I reached for the old looking old looking door handle but pulled back at the last minute as I realized my companion's gone ad adrift. Not coming in? I'll just be in the newsstand for a while, don't mind me. His voice makes it painfully clear he has zero interest in what's in this door, and that he doesn't seem feel he doesn't feel obligated to follow me. As he wanders off without another word, I push the thick wooden door and enter the store. A bell above me ringing out. The musty smell of an old book, old books and wooden shelves is distinctive and an anachronistic. I look to the counter beside the door. The graying man behind it sits silently, reading a tattered book. He certainly fits the look of the place. Slowly wandering through the aisles, the person I'm not reminded. I'm reminded of as I inspect each and handcrafted an important oddity in turn is an anako. Crouching down I examine an ancient oak desk beside the shop window. At least thirty dolls, all varying in size and make the old similarity between them in this long Victorian dress dress they wear. I turn the price tag of one that looks about the waist height. It's not in my price bracket price bracket at all. I did the same for each of them, getting more and more depressed as they small, the smaller and smaller they get in size. That is, until I reach the smallest one. It's affordable just, yet the quality the quality you make and with long auburn hair and a little gr blue dress. I decided it's the kind of present Naka would appreciate, pretty looking, far from gaudy. After I carefully pick it up, I decided to keep looking around the store. I'm not sure whether it's played it's because I like the atmosphere or out of simple curiosity. I really hope you chew the chest the chest set again. I please. Peeking around the corner before I go to the out before I go to the next aisle, I see the shelves in this one stocked with wooden toys, from toy cars and to intricate automotive whatever. Tucked behind a line of nutcrackers, I noticed a little plain wooden box. I feel surprisingly light as I pick it up with my free hand. The lid, only the smallest movement to pop open. The little, the little metal drum inside beginning to rotate immediately. For a second on in, I simply stand there, listening to the palm-sized melody. As it plays, I take a tiny price tag in my fingers and bring it up to my face. The minuscule cursive writing taking in taking some effort to read. It's affordable, sort of. Grimacing slightly, I close the lid and make my way to the counter with doll and music box in hand. When I lay the two on the counter, the man behind it sits up and takes stock of them. He doesn't hide very well, is surprised at someone of my age buying them. It's painful, but I hand over the money for the two and leave the store with the small, old packed bag in hand. Hideki, being the there, takes me by surprise. Oh, hi. I thought you'd be at the newsstand. Akira gave me a top call. She wanting us to. She waiting for us at the fountain with Lily. At least that solves the issue of trying to find them again. We head back. Uh, we head off. Back to the fountain. Great. Hideki's accumulate posture and presentation, despite his appearance, makes for a strange contrast even as we walk. Lily and Akira stand there waiting for us, their faces hard to read. Hey, you ready to go, Shorty? Hideki's moves seem to improve as he rejoins her. See ya, Lily Hasao. Hey, tell Anako I said happy birthday. You will, bye. Goodbye, Akira. And with that, the two disappeared in the fracas of the afternoon city crowd. Turning to Lily, I noticed she's carrying a small bag. I know that I realized why her disposition felt different, but from before. While Lily typically typical be the type to wear her emotion on her sleeve, her expression and tone are clouded and difficult to read. It's more than a little off-putting, but given the effort she's making to hide her emotion, I doubt you want to be cornered on why she's feeling the way that way. 
Already bought an Aqua present? Yes, have you? Yeah. Shall we head back to the bus stop then? Okay. There should be a bus back to Yamaka pretty soon. And with that, we begin to walk. It feels strange. Compared to poor, Lily's hand on my forearm seems unusually tense. The whole atmosphere is extraordinarily awkward. Silence continues for a while. I really don't like seeing like this. Naoko's birthday party is gonna be held earlier. Is it both gonna be alright for you? I have other possible obligations anyway, so I reluctantly nod. Only afterwards do I remember that doing so is pointless and quickly answer about so my speech. She tries to collect herself a task that looks almost pitiful, and how plain it is to see her distant thought her to see how distant her thoughts are. Sorry, Sal, you said the bus would be coming soon, right? That's right. Now that she says that I have an idea. Actually, do you have anything to do later today? I don't believe so. Why do you ask? There's this point where I'd normally take your hand and rush you somewhere, but even with that, that you'll have to trust me, okay? I take your hand and gently lead her on. Her distant pace replaced by one mild surprise and curiosity. Huh. Oh my god, no. Well, as the waitress sets a cup of tea and a cup of coffee that had ordered onto the table, I thank her before taking before she takes her leave. Truth be told, I luckily I lucked out finding the cafe. I didn't really know where I was going, but rather I was looking for any cafe that looked relatively nice. I'm gonna be right back again. Oh hi, I'm back. Uh yeah. Yeah. We're back. Sorry, I was looking at something again. Sorry. <laughs> Truth be told, I really looked out finding in the ca this cafe. The cafe. I didn't really know where I was going, rather. I was just looking for any cafe that looked relatively nice. This is the cafe you go to with Hanako. <laughs> Having managed to recover a little, Lily tentatively sips at her cup as I take a long gulp in the coffee in front of me. As I hoped, her face lights up as she realizes what flavor it is. Ah, this is wonderful. Sal, did you know that was, that this was? I asked for a French vanilla black tea, hedging my bets that it would be her favorite flavor, or at least one she liked. Well, I don't really know how much about much it's about tea. It's something like one she might appreciate. On the basis of her liking vanilla ice cream, a tea con connoisseur, I am definitely not. It was a lucky guess. You really like tea, don't you? She puts her teacup down and gives a tiny nod. The familiar smi smile thankfully perched on her face once again. Drinking tea is calming, I think. But the amount you drink, are you sure you're not addicted to it? Caffeine addiction is pretty common nowadays. Shut up, Sal! Fucking coffee every day, all day, 24-7? Did I ever say I wasn't? She lets out a giggle as my head drops. We all have our vices, I suppose, and there are worse things to be addicted to. French vanilla black tea, huh? I'll have to remember that. For a while, we both silently drink, but it's comfort comforting to have someone like her nearby in such new surroundings. Even if it's just the two of us sitting in silence. I begin to wonder if this feeling is the same for her until she sits down her cup. Sal, do you mind if I ask you a slightly odd question? That depends on the question, I guess. I was wondering what your favorite color is. Everyone has one, after all. I almost replied before realizing what seemingly mundane question is actually quite strange. My favorite color, but... Oh, she's pouting again. She gives a pouting look, wanting me to answer anyway. All the answer seems unavoidable, wasted on, unavoidably wasted on her. There isn't any harm in giving it. 
I've added a little thing, uh, for green. I'd say that's my favorite. Green, is it? What things do you think of when com contemplating that color? I suppose grass fields and trees in summer. The army as well, with camouflage. Men are always, see always seem to like the military. But, that sounds like a nice color. A very nice color. She nods her head a little, as if approving the of the choice. Considering how foreign the concept of color is to her mind, labeling it by associate association seems reasonable enough. If everyone has a favorite color, then what's yours? White. I'm told that's the color of snow and of ice cream. You know, you're no better than me then, if oh, he only liked that color because of a favorite food. I guess white is nice too though. And speaking of colors, it'll be getting dark soon. Let me head, help you up. Damn, what a gentleman. Lily well, offers his hand, which I take in mine to help lift her up from her seat at the table. Its softness compared to mine takes me off guard as I'm not really used to such casual contact. It doesn't seem to bother at all though, while it seems obvious why it feels like just one more ladylike aspect to her. As her hand moves to her pocket, I quickly cut her off. Don't worry, I'll pay for this. Oh, thank you, Sal. She gives me an earnest smile at the gesture, a reward much greater than the thought of her words. By the time we step off the bus, it's well and truly dark. We make our way up to up the hill in silence, both of us behaving a little awkwardly, probably because of the day of the event of the day events. Jeez. While while I'm still concerned over Lily's withdrawn nature after meeting with her sister, the fact I managed to cheer her up even slightly feels like a personal victory. But it feels like the th air between us has changed. Maybe it's only a bit, but it's something I don't either of think either of us realized before. That was a date, wasn't it? It was. There's no loot of either of us, and the question's answered being so self-evident as to be rhetorical. Awkward as it may be, I don't think this feeling is bad. In fact, quite the opposite. I don't know what it is, I certainly can't be sure, but it feels like something's a little more than friendship. Understanding, empathy, searching for words to adequately describe it is difficult nonetheless. Would you like to do it again sometime, Lily? without chopping for presents. The tentative question is met with the same look from Lily as before. Her pale skin makes a rosy tint out of her cheeks, so it's just slightly more noticeable on her face. Though still pointing to the streets ahead of her lowers lowers just a little. Okay. Ooh Dude 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 That that was that was pretty cute.